Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to talk about one of the most impressive, if not really the most impressive DAC that I put my hands on. Many, many years ago I was using a Cord DAC 64 and then a QBD 76 HD, which can be seen as the predecessors of the Core Dave, but for no particular reason I never tried a Core Dave before. And today's review feels like a coming back to my roots and understanding why I was choosing uh, flagship cord DAX in my uh, written articles. So this one is a proper flagship device as it goes for uh, 14,000 bucks. Let's check what's so interesting about it and then let's check how it sounds in the usual fashion. Its predecessor, QBD 76 HD, uh, survived a crash test versus a Russian T55 tank. And since Dave uses absolutely the same case, the same thickness, you should never worry about its build quality because it's built like a tank and uh, you can actually see that it has super thick metal plates. So this one is just amazing when it comes to build quality. If I would nitpick just a little bit, that would be its rounded everything. So rounded case, rounded buttons, rounded display. I slightly dislike this kind of uh, design, but uh, you know, it's perfectly fine. I believe that everything else is just amazing. Uh, five screws on each side is a little bit too much. It's a little overkill. I believe that two screws per side would be enough. And of course, eight rubber feet uh, is a little bit too much. Four would be just enough. Dave has absolutely the same case and the same shape with the rest of the Cora line, and that's great because you can stack them together. And while I dislike a little bit its look, I respect and I really like its outstanding build quality. As for controls, it isn't a surprise to anyone that Cord Electronics really, and I mean really likes BNC inputs and outputs because you can see four BNC inputs and another four BNC outputs which were labeled as DX outputs to be used with future devices, uh, but so far those haven't been used yet. Additionally, you'll find two optical inputs, a USB and an AAC input. I'm a little sad that I didn't find an I2S input via HDMI as that's my favorite digital input. When it comes to analog outputs, you'll find a pair of RCA and XLR outputs and both can be controllable or fixed depending on the settings. As for tech inside it, Dave is not using off-the-shelf DAC chips or ladders of resistors. Instead, it relies on a very powerful FPGA that on paper has the processing power of 1000 conventional DAC chips. So yes, this is a software-defined DAC that has an improved WTA filter compared to its predecessors to better reconstruct the timing of the transients. So it has a 164,000 tap WTA filter and 166 DSP cores, some very nerdy stuff. And if you want to learn just a little bit more about it, I do recommend my uh, written review that I put below or just Dave's technology presentation that you can find on its official webpage. Dave can also be used as a preamplifier, but also as a headphone amplifier because it can provide up to six volts and 0.5 amperes on its headphone output. And of course, I'll be testing it with a bunch of headphones, so uh, please stay tuned for that. Before telling you a lot about its sound performance, I just want to remind you that I tried this one in a headphone setup connected to Atrophomatic Primavera, but also in a stereo setup connected to a Cord Ultima 3 preamplifier and Ultima 5 power amplifier for the best results. Okay, guys, so this is pretty much it, and I believe it's the right time to hit some eardrums. Just a day before posting my Diana Flips Terminator Plus review, a good friend of mine called me and asked if he can listen to my Trophomatic Primavera headphone amplifier, but he wanted to use his own uh, Cord Dave DAC. Then later that evening, a few friends came over, everybody got to listen to that exact setup, except for me because I needed to pour wine and beer left and right. But later that night, I was already comparing these two, so the Core Dave and Terminator Plus. But a day before, I was actually 
in the process of buying that review sample, the Terminator Plus review sample, because it sounded just amazing. And after comparing these two for a few hours, the very first word that came into my mind was decimation. So what was great sounding became just ultimate sounding. What was fast was ultra fast. What was super detailed, very transparent, just became real sounding. What was punchy sounding just became a, a worldwide uh, you know, boxing champion, something like that. It was just super punchy sounding. One sounded as if music was recorded and then played back, while the other sounded like music was playing back in real time, all the time. One felt like a super fast computer, while the other felt like a quantum computer, just solving much harder tasks at much higher speeds. Early in the morning, I was already sending a very different email to my local Cord dealer. Uh, because I wanted to buy a Core Dave, so I bought it. This is my unit, so here we are. Uh, this is not a review sample, this is not a sponsored review. These are my honest impressions, as all my reviews are around here. So let's break it down step by step what I believe is so interesting and so special with the Core Dave, and let's start with transit response. Some of you already know my desire for an ultimate speed, impact, and control of the drivers. And after trying more than 100 DACs, I believe that there is a strong pattern that is still undergoing right now. So entry-level r 2 r DACs are pretty much the slow sounding of the bunch, uh, closely followed by uh, cheaper-based converters that are faster, even if those are more affordable ones. When Dave plays music, it plays in such a way that it feels like it knows exactly what it is going to play. So everything is played at the perfect timing. Like I'm experiencing the world's most technical drummer that never misses a beat, that never misses an octave. So I don't remember getting such a fast reaction time with, uh, with a digital tonal converter. So you need to hear it to believe it, how it handles all those double drums, uh, quick shifts in terms of dynamics. Uh, this one is just lightning fast sounding in terms of speed. Obviously, I'm describing a highly energetic unit, and it doesn't really matter if I'm listening to headphones or loudspeakers. There is no way I wouldn't smile, toy tap, and headbang with a unit like this one. It also knows how to change its pace, so this is a very chameleon-like duck. It will slow down, it will sound much more relaxed, uh, even liquid with something like blues, uh, you know, jazz, classical music. With something like uh, Black Velvet by Infected Mushroom, I simply couldn't refrain from smiling because I was constantly bombarded with bass notes coming from very different angles. So this was not only a very fast, punchy uh, sounding unit, but also a very holographic sounding unit as well, because I believe it's, uh, it was very layered sounding in the bass. And if you like a layered type of bass, uh, then so far, this is my numero uno DAC at that. And sometimes it felt like I switched from a stereo to a Dolby Atmos recording. A very weird effect at first, but a very pleasing one nonetheless. When it comes to detail retrieval and transparency, I feel that cheaper based Delta Sigma DACs are winning against some ground versus R to R other DACs because those are much better at retrieving more information from the original files. On the other hand, I feel that r 2 r other ducks are much better at showing the e notes, the texture, the weight of the music, you know, becoming a little lusher, but without uh, highlighting the leading edges, the contour of the notes. With Dave, I believe that I'm getting, uh, you know, the best of both worlds, because this one is a very lush, rich, full-bodied, but also extremely detailed, putting just a big accent on that word, on extremely. I believe that uh, with a unit of this caliber is really redundant telling you about uh, detailed retrieval, about transparency, because uh, it will retrieve every bit of information from your music with utmost accuracy all the time. It doesn't sound like digital, it sounds more like real music being played by real musicians that are sitting in front of you playing just for you. So in terms of detail and dynamic range, I believe that they've just single-handedly outperformed all r 2 r other DAX, all cheap-based Delta Sigma DAX that I had the pleasure of testing at my place. I don't really care what 
others uh, measured with the audio analyzers. I simply cannot deny what I'm hearing with my ears, with my gear, uh, those strong feelings that I'm getting, I cannot deny those. And for me, this is pretty much the most detailed doc that I've heard up to this point. In terms of sound stage and imaging, while I can understand down to the smallest details, the inner workings of art to ladder ducks, of chip-based Delta Sigma converters, I can only partially understand the inner workings of an FPGA DAC like uh, Dave. So I'm not really sure why it sounded so big, so spacious, and so airy. It doesn't have a big output stage. It doesn't have a big transformers. Uh, you know, it doesn't have a big capacitance, and yet it sounds so incredibly big alive, so ethereal, so holographic. It was constantly shushing into my ear, hey Doc man, forget everything you know about Dax, I'll be sounding completely different. And you know, it was all true because it didn't remind me about anything else, especially in terms of sound stage, detailed retrieval and transit response. And instead of uh, pushing and pulling my listening chair back and forth, depending on the music, it was leaving me exactly in the middle and it was a circling that uh, image, uh, 360 degree image, image in front of me. So I was looking from a different perspective at my music. There's always a gargantum void space in between the notes. And while I cannot hear that void space, it's not there. I can feel that uh, void space and I can feel that uh, with loudspeakers, but especially with headphones because some headphones sounded just uh, considerably bigger compared to what I know them to be. With tracks like So What by Miles Davis, I feel that all musicians just took a circle all around me and that felt not only via loudspeakers, but especially via headphones. And in case of headphones, I used that crossfit feature so I could bring them a little bit more forward, not only to my side, so that stereo effect uh, wouldn't be bothering me anymore. And of course, Dave was stretching wide all that sound stage, and it didn't sound only very wide, but also very deep, uh, very holographic at the same time. I want to talk today about its performance in a stereo setup because uh, Chord Ultima 5 and Ultima 3 reviews will be coming shortly, using Dave as the front end of that setup. But today I'll be focusing on its headphone amplifier section. So usually all-in-one devices are doing one thing just amazing and everything else not so much. There are a few exceptions from that rule, like uh, Barson Conductor 3 XGT. That one had an amazing DAC and headphone amplifier section, but usually it's not like that. Dave is of course a DAC first and everything else second, so I slightly lowered my expectations uh, via headphones. So I started with some higher sensitivity desktop headphones like Apos Caspian, like uh, Kinerton Valley, Erzitich Mania, and at around minus 25 dB, it was already way too loud. It was uh, driving them pretty easily. With heavier loads like Meze Elite, like Kinerton Rogner, like Erzitich Phobos, I was arriving at minus 15 dB. So of course, plenty of headroom was still remaining on top. But most importantly, it was still sounding quite alive, dynamic, punchy, very clean sounding. So I had all the traits of uh, you know, an amazing headphone amplifier. When I moved to something like Odyssey LCD4, then I felt that it was slowly running out of steam. Sound stage was slightly shrinking in size. Dynamics were not so playful. Bass notes were not so impactful. So clearly it was running out of steam a little bit. And of course, with headphones like Hapamon Susvara and Abyss 1266, uh, it won't drive those loads. Uh, with headphones like Sennheiser HD 800S, those are high impedance headphones, I was sometimes arriving at minus 5 dB. And again, I felt that it was not doing justice with such headphones. It was okay, but it was not outstanding. It will easily replace a mid fine desktop headphone amplifier, but if you are a serious headphone enthusiast, I believe that a DAC of such caliber deserves a high-end headphone amplifier that can unleash its maximum potential. Moving on to frequency response, if somebody will ever invent a gold standard to which all others should uh, be compared with in terms of bass performance, then I believe that Core Dave would be that benchmark to which all others should compare. So it's really pointless telling you about its uh, bass depth, bass speed, bass detail, bass layering, because all that is really automated. It's really 
playing in a league of its own. I don't remember hearing such a fast, impactful, but also very clean and layered type of bass. I always like the cleanliness and you know the fast decays of uh, cheap bass Delta Sigma converters, and I also liked that that weighty, textured, and very full-bodied bass of Art Well Other Ducks. And it seems that Dave is somehow combining all those traits, sounding always clean, detailed, but also full-bodied and weighty all the time. Probably the only area that wouldn't outperform a top-of-the-line art while at the dock would be the mid-range region, which didn't feel as emotionally involved, as expressive sounding to say top-of-the-line Rockna, MSB, Denafrips, a musician, and so on. But it definitely sounded way better in the mid-range compared to top-of-the-line chip-based Delta Sigma DACs like Matrix Audio Element X, like Gustav X26 Pro. If I would describe its mid-range performance with a single word, that would be real sounding. Vocal performance was so real sounding, especially after following with a tube amplifier like Traformatic Primavera. Actually, this one with Primavera and Hypnos Vara uh, was what I would describe as aural sex. I didn't want to change, I don't want to change anything from that formula, and I just want to relieve those moments every single day. And that's how it sounded in the mid-range. Its treble performance is nothing short of spectacular. While I'm listening to a lot of rock tracks in general, there's always a new nuance, a new detail with the Dave, especially in the treble, and that was so apparent. And I like that its treble is not only very detailed and clean, but also it has that perfect pitch, perfect timing, because cymbal is sounding like a cymbal, big drum is sounding like a big drum, for example, at the 20 second mark on Cactus by Pixies, there's a big drum just, you know, crushing that transformed Primavera view meters into sledgehammers. And honestly, I don't remember getting those uh, drums as impactful and as hard hitting before. And the most interesting part about Dave is not how detailed or how clean it sounds in the treble, but how real it sounds in the treble thanks to that perfect pitch and timing never making those drums artificial or weird sounding. As for my conclusion, this is the most Camino-like DAC that I have experienced so far, and I cannot wait to know what future holds because Dave isn't exactly a new DAC per se. For me personally, Dave was one of the most complete sounding units, and that's why I decided getting one, using it as my new reference DAC for new reviews to come. With all that said, I cannot recommend left and right Dave. This is not a unit for everybody. I cannot recommend it as your first duck. Hell, I cannot recommend it as your fifth duck. You'll need to get at least a few art war ducks, cheap base ducks, FPGA ducks until you start appreciating what it has to offer. And if you are willing to experiment what I believe is one of the nicest ducks out there, only then I can recommend you the course Dave. As one of the best converters that I tried, I believe that it fully deserved my gold award. Okay guys, a much longer in-depth review can be found below. Please check that out. And as usual, listen to my tunes, be positive, and I'll see you soon. Miles Davis. Miles Davis. Miles Davis. Miles Davis.